Hello, project managers, and welcome back to another video in our series on Microsoft Project Desktop. So in case you're coming here for the very first time, my name is Yasmin Brooks, and I'm going to be guiding you through this uh, series of videos. But be aware that this is episode number two. So in case you missed the first one, please go ahead and make sure you watch that because we are going to be building on the same project. In case you don't want to go ahead and do that, you will be able to find a link for the class files for today in the description of this video. So you can go ahead, download that starting file, and you'll be able to see exactly what we have here in my screen. All right. So that said, in episode number one, we talked about the basics of projects. We talked about the auto scheduled mode versus the manual scheduled mode, how you'd be able to change between modes. And we started our list of tasks and we also created summary tasks. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how you're going to create the task relationships and what are some of the best practices whenever linking tasks together and much more about your project. So project summary tasks and uh, more. So I'm, I don't want to give too many spoilers here. So let's go ahead and follow me to project. So we're going to get started with the next phase of our project plan, which is after we have created our list of tasks. So now we already know what are the activities that we're going to be doing for this project. We are going to go ahead and actually create the task relationship. So we're going to tell project in which order these activities are going to happen. So as you can see, we're not going to be able to do all of this at the same time. And this is what I have going on right now. All those tasks are starting on Friday, January 5th. And they're going, the longest one is finishing on this uh, Thursday year, actually Tuesday. So that's what we have so far. And this is unrealistic. So we are going to create task relationships and I'm going to start by doing something wrong, just so I can show you what is the right way for you to do it. Normally, I'm going to, how would you go to create task relationships? We showed you that briefly in the first video, you would go and link tasks together. So this is how you create task relationships, it's easy. So what I see a lot of people doing, is doing this. So you are going to select all your tasks. So you can select them all like this, or you can just select them all like that, however you want to do it. But you select your tasks as they are right now. You already have your summary tests and everything. And you're going to go and you are going to link those tests together. Okay. So this is going to cause problems. Notice a few of those. This is wrong. So don't follow me along for now because we're going to fix this in the right way. I'm going to add one additional column here. And that's going to be my successors column. And I'm going to move this column right next to my predecessors. So I have predecessors and successors, one right next to the other. The predecessors column is a default column that you have here in project. So uh, as soon as you open a new project, you're going to see that one there. Ideally, you would have one predecessor task for every task that you have in your project plan. You should not have open-ended tests. How do I spot a open-ended task? A open-ended task is going to be a task, for example, like this one. This task is floating here. It's popping up in the middle of your project right there. But this task is not linked to any previous task. And I know that because there's no line connecting this task here between this activity and this other one. I should expect to see a line there. And I don't see it. Okay? So I should expect to see a line right here. The same way that I have this line kind of like linking all those activities together. I should expect to see a line right there. Whenever you see a little uh, task in your Gantt chart that's not linked to anything else, that should raise a flag. I find, especially when you have very large projects, hard to find open-ended tasks by looking at the Gantt chart. The easiest way for you to spot open-ended tasks is by looking at your predecessors in your successor skull. Okay. When you link tasks the way we did, notice that this is going to create open-ended tasks. You have tasks here that do not have predecessors, okay? And every task should, ha should have a predecessor with the exception of the very first task of your list, okay? Because this is the very first one. There's no predecessor for this one. Every task in your project plan should also have a successor with one exception as well. The exception is going to be the very last task in your project plan because this is how you're going to complete your project. So you don't need to have a successor here, okay? And you can see that we have tasks here that have no successors as well, okay? So you can see that this is causing a ton of open-ended tests. The other thing here is that it's not a best practice for you to link summary tests to summary tests. So you shouldn't link summary tests to summary tests. 
and we have those links happening right now. This is what I see. I have predecessor for, for summary tests. And this is not what you want. You should link tasks to tasks and also tasks to milestones. We're going to talk about milestones in just a little bit. For now, let's keep this in. So task to task and task to milestones. So how do I fix that? So the first thing I'm going to do is actually multi-select all my tests again, and I'm going to break the link. Okay. I'm going to break the link. If I come here, it's going to unlink those tests. So each one of those is going to happen in parallel like it was in the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and unlink those tests. So that problem is solved. And now before you link tests together, go to your Gantt chart format tab, which is this one. And you can also, you can from there, turn off your summary tests. Okay. So don't forget to do that step, Gantt chart format. And there is an option here that says show high in your Gantt chart format, show high. And you can hide your summary test. That's what we're going to be doing now. So hide the summary test. And then I'm going to go back to my test tab right here. And in my test tab, I can now go ahead and link tests together. So if I link my tasks now, oh, I have to select them first. <laughs> so select them all first and then link them. And you are going to see that now there's no open in the test. Every task is linked to one another. And if you go back to your game chart format, then now you can safely turn back on your summary tests and you are good to go. Notice that the summary tasks, they do not have any predecessors or successors. So that's exactly what we would want. And now the only task that doesn't have a predecessor is task one, which is this one here. And the only task that does not have a successor is your last task, which is good. That's what we want. Another easy way for you to spot if you have open-ended tasks is by going to your view tab. And in your view tab, you have this area here that this button that says outline. So on view and outline, I can come here and I can show all the different levels. Right now, we only have two levels. Okay. So if I show only my level one tasks, you will see only the uh, summary test. So level one, it's only going to show me my summary tests. And this is how you would check to make sure that no summary task has a predecessor or a successor. This is what we want. So I'm going to make this green. This is chara. This is right. This is what we want. No summary tasks with predecessors and successors. And you can do the opposite. I can go to outline and now I can only see my level two, only show my level two. Uh, actually, it's, it's showing everything. So I'm going to go back to my game chart format. It's showing my level one in level two. So I'm going to go back to Gantt chart format and just turn off my summary tasks again. And here is where you should make sure that there's no blanks. Okay. So there's no blanks with those two exceptions that we talked about. So this is the one, the only one that can accept a blank. And this is also the only one that can accept a blank on the successor step at call. So here you should have a number in all of those, no blanks. And whenever you have only your summary tasks, this should have no predecessors or successors associated with summary tests. Okay. And then you can hide and show them as you seem fit. So what are milestones? Milestones, they are going to be a task that it's not a activity itself. It's not something that you have to do. Everything that we have added here so far, it's an activity. I have to do something here. I have to search for inspiration images, and this is going to take me three days to complete. I have to choose colors. And this is going to take me half a day to complete. And then I have to purchase supplies. I'm doing things here. Milestones, they mark some accomplishment. So I can say that my planning phase is complete. So I can come here and I can click on my row number five, where I say prepping, which is going to be the very first after where you want to add the milestone. And I can right click and select insert task. It's going to insert the task above it. Okay. So if I insert task that way, it's going to add a new task here. And then I can add my milestone and I can call my milestone, for example, planning phase complete. Because this is not an activity itself, a milestone is going to be understood by project whenever you set an activity with a zero days duration. So it's marking a important point in time. So if I add zero on my duration, I press enter. Pay attention to what's going to happen in the Gantt chart. So a milestone is recognized as this diamond shape right here. Okay. 
So this marks that you have completed this phase, okay? So zero days duration, project is going to understand this as a milestone. It's going to place a icon accordingly in your game chart, okay? And you can do, you can add milestones at the end of every phase. Having milestones will make your life easy, especially when we get to changing the different predecessors and successors, when we talk about the different relationship types and how you can have activities happening at the same time to shorten the duration of your project. Milestones are going to play an important role. So for now, just save that information that it's good to have milestones. And I'm going to add a few more. So I'm going to go to my execution on row 11. And I'm going to do the same thing. Right click, insert task, and I'm going to call my prepping phase complete. That's going to be my milestone here. Prepping phase complete. And zero days duration. Don't forget that. And I'm going to do that one, two more times. So on the cleaning phase, insert task. It's going to insert the task above it. And then I'm going to create my execution complete. That's going to be another milestone. So milestones have zero day durations. And I'm going to add one more here. So project complete this is the end of my project. So I'm going to call this my project complete. And this is also going to have a zero day duration. My project complete was not linked automatically. So I'm just going to go ahead and link those two together. Okay. So just select those two and go back to my test tab. And I can see that because my milestone is positioned not where it was supposed to. It was supposed to be positioned right after we complete the test, so more or less around here. So I'm just going to go ahead and link those tests. And I was able to spot that by looking at my predecessors and successors call. So now the milestone is in the right position. Okay. So we have finalized our project plan. Kind of. There are a ton of adjustments we're going to keep doing in the next videos on the series. But for now, I want to talk to you about the project summary test. Notice that now, after we have created our relationships, uh, the planning phase, it's not showing three days anymore. It's actually showing four. Because now, project knows that this activity is going to take place first. And only after you complete this one, they're not happening at the same time, then you are going to go to activity two and then activity three. So you can see that in your game chart as well and projects summing all of that together. So the planning phase is going to take you four days to complete. So the prepping phase is going to take you three days because it's going to take you half a day to remove objects, lay down a uh, drop cloth, tape service is going to take one day, prep uh, paint equipment another one day. So here, if you put it all together, you have three days. And then execution phase is going to take you one and a half day, and then cleaning phase is going to take two days. All right. But what if you want to know how long it's going to take for you to complete the entire project? Do you have to have a calculator on hand and sum all those phases? Probably not. That wouldn't be super helpful. So we're going to talk about the project summary task. So if you go to your game chart format tab right here, you are going to see in that same show height area where we can turn on and off our summary tasks, there is an option here that says project summary task. So if I turn on my project summary task, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Look what's going to happen right here. You are going to find something right here up on top, right before the planning phase. So let's go ahead and do that. The project summary task is always going to automatically uh, collect the name that you have saved your project. So because we haven't saved this file, it's still called project two. So that's uh, the name here, but you can definitely come here and change. I can come here and I can call this my painting room plan. And I can rename that as well. So now when you have your project summary task, notice that the project summary task is going to give you the total duration for your project. It's basically summing all the phases that you have in the project. So for you to paint a room, it's going to take you about 10 days to complete. Okay. All said and done between searching the images, choosing the colors, purchasing supplies, removing, cleaning everything and then putting everything back into the room, it's going to take you about 10.5 days. And now we are going to actually go ahead and save our project. And I'm just going to copy this because that's how I'm going to save this project as well. So I'm going to do a save as, and we can talk about the quick access toolbar in later video. I have my save as right here. If you do not have that in your quick access toolbar, you can just go to file and you'll find a save as option right there. 
and you can pick where you want to save. So you can just click on browse and this is going to open all your uh, computer files. So I'm just going to save this on my documents and I'm going to call this my painting room plan. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Let, let me see if I have a better, oh, I actually have a better uh, folder for this. So I'm going to replace this other file that we have there. And I'm just going to go ahead and save it. it. Do you want to replace? Yes, I do. Mm, it's currently open. I'm going to have to close that. I'll just give it a number two. So in this video, we learned about how you can create task relationships, some of the best practices when creating relationships. And in the next videos, we are going to be talking about some additional project information that's important for you to add. For example, in this video, we talked about how to create relationships, but all of our tasks are set to as a finish to start, meaning that you have to finish one task first before you can go to the next. So in the next videos, we are going to be talking about some additional things you can do to try to reduce the time frame of your project. And I hope you get excited and I'll see you in the next video of this series.